and thank you for joining us on Thursday's episode of the Roundtable Talk Show. We have had an amazing week. We had so much fun. I can't believe this is what I do for a living, to be able to speak to so many people. If you are just now tuning into the show, oh, you got to go watch all of the shows in the archive because we have had some amazing guests. We've had people call in from all over the world, from Ghana, from the UK, from Israel. Today's guest is in Europe, so we're going to have some fun. We also had Jackson, a 16-year-old journalist, joined us yesterday. So this is the show to watch weekday mornings at 8 a.m. I'm your host, Sharifa Hardy, and we're going to have some fun today, but we're also going to learn. We're going to provide you with resources, tools, strategies, advice, ways we're dealing with COVID-19 and how we can be a positive influence in your life. But I'm going to ask you, like I always ask you, to support the show, support our guests, check out their websites in the post, and you know what? Go ahead and share this live because we are here to help you. I'm going to go ahead and introduce today's guest. Our first guest is Dr. Veena Patel. Dr. Patel is amazing. She's in Maryland. She's a conflict resolution and organizational health specialist. She's an author. She's a speaker. She talks about female suicide. That's one of the things we're going to talk about today and suicide bombers. Good morning, Dr. Patel. How are you? Good morning. Good. How are you? Thank you for having me on the show today. You are so welcome. I'm excellent. I'm excited. I, I probably shouldn't be excited about talking about suicide bombers, but hey, you know, inquiring minds. That's right. Our next guest is Renee Fry. She's the founder of Gentrio. She's a highly motivated entrepreneur. She deals with IPOs, startups, business to business, and implementing solutions for tough challenges. Good morning, Renee. How are you? Oh, good. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me today. You are so welcome. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. And let me introduce Anna Falcon, who again is calling us from Europe. She's a marketing strategist at Zelos, and she's a she deals with volunteers and startup. Good morning, Anna. How are you? Good morning, everyone. Thank you for having me on the show. Of course, you are so welcome. It is my pleasure. And then last but not least, we're going to go over here to Mr. Lockett. We have Brett Lockett, who is a leading business consultant. He's a speaker, entrepreneur. He's also a former NFL player, and he's the founder of High Stakes Training. Good morning, Brett. How are you? I'm great, Sharif. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. I am wonderful. I'm just going to start with a simple question, then I actually go into my real questions. Maybe you can answer this for me, Brett. But why is it that I always get like all the women? Like, why do all the women want to come on the show? Why is it so hard to get a man to join me at the round table? I, I'm telling you, for, for men, it's it's tough for us to share our emotions, right? We, we don't want to talk. We don't want to communicate. We just want to bundle up and hold everything inside and, uh, you know, fight it out. You know, women love to communicate and powwow and come together. Maybe Maybe that's a reason. Hey, I thought I asked. I didn't know if you had an answer, but I would go with that one. I definitely like that because it's, it's like I literally like I need all these guests, but I kind of have to negotiate and maneuver the guys. I'm like, I have all these women. Can you just please just be a guest? <laughs> yeah, so I, I, men, men don't love to share, unfortunately. So, um, you know, we like our our men's groups and we feel like sometimes it's difficult to talk to women. So maybe we, uh, maybe we do a, a all men session where we come and figure out how to get more men on here. Okay. Let me going to do that. That's the day. That would be a great idea. Okay. <laughs> you round them up and then we'll do a, a all men show as soon as you get all the guys. But I just wanted to ask that, but I'm going to be serious for a minute. One of the things that um, just one minute though, not for too long. Um, one of the things that I've been talking about and all of the guests are talking about is how we have been affected by COVID-19, whether that's personally or professionally. So what I usually start out with is what was your life like before you, this um, occurrence? And then what is your life like now? How has it changed? What are some of the things that you learned? So I'm going to go ahead and start with Anna. Anna, you want to take that for me? Yeah, um, well, I work in a volunteer management startup before the crisis hit, but we were focused in events and festivals. Mm -hmm. So for us, the crisis started around three weeks before then in the States. Mm -hmm. So we saw it coming and we saw it coming closer and closer and closer. And suddenly from one day to the next, uh, workplaces were closed, everything was shut down and the government sent us home. 
So we are a volunteer management company who suddenly finds themselves without any business because all the events and festivals were closed. But we do what we know best, which is manage volunteers. So instead of just sitting at home, uh, we realized there was a competition between companies that is called a hackathon. So we signed up immediately and we worked through the weekend and we launched a helpline in two days to help our local community. So by using our tool and refocusing from events to crisis relief, we managed to set up a helpline and start working to help our immediate community. So yeah, it was definitely from one day to the next, it was okay, I'm going to work in a startup to okay, I'm working on crisis relief. Yeah. One of the reasons um, I wanted to start with you is I was kind of curious when I read your bio and being a marketing strategist, one of the things that I've been discussing is that there's a shift, obviously, in marketing. If there's a shift in the commercials that we see and one, one, like one commercial that stands out to me was Verizon Wireless. I'm watching television, the Verizon Wireless commercial comes on and you have all these people who, we're here to help you, we're here to you know protect you, we're here to work with you. And at the end, you hear the voice say, Verizon Wireless is here to assist you 24 hours a day on verizonwireless.com. And my first reaction was, okay, but hasn't verizonwireless.com been available to assist people for years? You know, but it's just the change in the messaging. As a marketing strategist, have you made any recommendations or talked to your clients about the messages that they should or can put out during this time? Definitely. Uh, there was, uh, at first, companies didn't know how to react mm -hmm. uh, because you don't want to use the crisis as a sell point. That's mm -hmm. something you want to avoid. Mm -hmm. So what we uh, try to guide them through is like uh, refocus your business buy but a little bit, be flexible. How can you create something that actually helps? So for us it was like, okay, forget about selling, let's focus on helping. And that by itself is something that you can uh, finance. Uh, so yeah, it's something that we are asking our clients, be very sensitive about the language that you use. If you do not have like a, a positive message to send right now, a little bit of guidance is more than enough a little bit of guidance to show that you are there as a human being beyond uh, as being as a brand or beyond of being as a product, you are there. So that's for us uh, the top aspect that we want to share, that we are here together. Mm -hmm. To the, be of help, to be of service. I believe that's an excellent message. I want to move over to Renee. Renee, basically the same question as someone who is a, a business owner, a founder, there's a lot of responsibility. How has every, how have you changed in terms of your business? First, can I give a huge shout out to my mom? Like, okay. Hi, mom. So, well, without my mom, we wouldn't be doing all the things that we can be doing because so many of us depend on family members right now. So with Gentrio, we do online estate planning. So we might be one of the few companies seeing a huge surge in demand and need. But that means that at the same time, that's a huge surge in demand and all the things we're doing. So family in this time has been so critical. So we had to pick up and move down to a Pennsylvania to come spend time. And I think that's something really critical that you know, all of us, whether it's we probably can't be in person with our families, but that's one thing that at Gentrio, we really encourage people to do, whether it's you know creating your documents, like your healthcare proxy and power of attorney, all those things are really critically important now. But at the same time, you wanna make sure you share all those documents and things with your family so they can actually get used. And so that was one of the things we put a huge emphasis on is that first, you know, we put out an essential employees campaign, knocked everything down to $29 so that people can do healthcare proxies, powers of attorneys and wills, because the average folks, only 18% of the US people have done estate planning. And most people in the past thought it was for only the wealthy. Okay, it's not, you all need it. You all need it, even if you're married, doesn't matter, you have to do it. And so what we tried to do is make it something that, you know, for essential workers, get it, get it, we'll make it affordable. And this goes back to what Anna was just talking about, where it's like, you know what, our priorities in the past were building a company, but right now our priorities are helping all the families we can protect as much as they can. 
Did you change your message? I, I, I'm, that's back yeah, to one yeah. of the things that Anna said. Yeah, no, and we really did. So one of the things that we did was um, we got out and we said, okay, look, we're gonna start doing like free webinars for people. And this is all about, okay, let us help you protect yourselves. Whereas in the past, it was like, protect the ones you love and X, Y, and Z. But now what we started doing was getting out through webinars and stuff saying, okay, look, we know you're at home. We know you have questions. Let us help you answer those questions. It's a scary time, but here are our experts, you know, our lawyers and stuff are here for you. Whereas in the past, it would have been like, hey, plan, protect, prepare, you know, prepare. And now it's really more like, hey, okay, we are here for you right now, here today. Sign up. You can talk to real lawyers. You can ask real questions, and it's not going to cost you a dime. When is your next webinar? Uh, the next one actually is at noon today. Uh, mm -hmm. No, one o'clock today, Eastern time. And okay. so, and it's around caregiving and estate planning, because again, so many folks today, if they can't be like, as lucky as me to be with their mother, um, they really need help around, okay, I'm a caregiver. What do I do? And how do I protect the ones I love? And then next week, uh, there's a new series coming up because so many of the webinars have been so well subscribed that we're going to keep doing one. Uh, we did one recently for women. We're doing a few more around um, family members, some with young kids. And no matter what, some of the messaging is specific, but it's all about, okay, look, how do you protect your family? Because you don't want the worst to happen. And um, we even try to add some jokes in there that as funny as you can be with you know, estate planning and stuff, <laughs> but we try to make them as lighthearted as possible. But one thing that's unique for us too, is that uh, we were founded by three women mm -hmm. and most of us are moms or like my sister who helps care for my son. Um, mm -hmm. We all understand really how important it is for families to you know, just do what they can to protect themselves. And a part of that is learning and making sure that it's doing. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned one of your webinars was specifically focused on women. I know I was joking with Brett earlier, but is there a specific reason why you focus on, on the women? Yeah, so a lot of times what we find, and I'll just be honest with this through Facebook and other marketing, women are the ones who click through on the ads, and it's really the people who are, and it's 80-20, really, mm -hmm. it's 80% women, 20% men, and mm -hmm. so one of the things we identified pretty quickly was that women, in, the, in that age group, I would say 40 to about 60, it, those are the majority of folks clicking through, and what they're trying to do, I think, sometimes from the questions we've gotten, and this is just this part is just antecedent from what we've seen is, you know, they're the ones that are those caregivers kind of that are like, okay, I need to figure out what am I doing for my mom? What am I doing for my dad? Oh, okay, I have my kids. And then trying to influence and work with their partners. And so trying to figure out, okay, how do we get people to actually pull the trigger and do things? But it's the women definitely that seem to want to learn a little bit more. And then from an estate planning perspective, I think women in particular um, around making sure they protect their families and themselves, because you, if you are married, you really do still have to have these documents. Sometimes I think some of the women in the past have been a little reticent about asking some of those questions or saying, wait, should I really do this for myself? And the answer is yes. Yes, you should do this for yourself. Mm. Interesting. So we're going to go from estate planning to suicide bombers. I don't know how I made that segue, that leap. But that's just how I'm feeling this morning. Dr. Patel, thank you for joining us. Again, I read your bio, I read your information, and I was like, okay, I wonder what someone with this kind of background is doing during this whole COVID-19 outbreak. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Dr. Patel. Yes, hi. So thank you again for having me. Um, I actually come from a business background, a family of entrepreneurs. Um, uh, originally uh, born in Kenya, Nairobi, Kenya, and migrated to the U.S. Um, I have to say I'm very proud to be an immigrant but a naturalized citizen um, coming in and, and uh, not just learning more about this country and all the great things it has to offer, but really being prideful of, of, of just being an American. Um, I, I, my background is actually not just in a, um, global business, but um, I have a degree in conflict resolution and peacekeeping analysis. And while those concepts go well with uh, family mediation and uh, workplace conflicts, it's also can, they can be applicable to global conflict and crisis and suicide terrorism as well. Um, you know, understanding how human behavior affects uh, each person is different. Understanding what makes somebody tick is very important. 
and understanding the vulnerabilities in disaster zones and war zones are even more important. I will tell you that in my work experience and my professional experience, I've seen that whether you're in a war zone or in a disaster zone, the emotions are very similar. Um, if the fear is very real and fear can uh, become uh, anger very quickly and people lash out or they shut down. Um, and so understanding what goes behind the role of uh, the, the human anatomy, the female anatomy specifically, and being a woman, um, when I was studying uh, suicide bombers, and I would hate to call them that, but essentially um, that is what the, the term is, They it, it's not that we should... Uh, hate them or feel sorry for them, but it's to understand why would somebody want to die that way. So imagine being in a war zone or where you are forced to live in a refugee camp because your house is destroyed by artillery fire or bombs or whatever the case is. And then you've got, you know, five or six kids and yet you're expected to have more kids, but you cannot. So imagine the postpartum depression, just depression in general that goes on let alone um, you just want your, your life to end. So as a woman, it can be tough. Um, as an Indian woman, I can tell you that there's a lot of stigmas associated with Eastern cultures specifically. Um, and, and we see them also in Western cultures, but just being a woman is not easy. I will also tell you that um, I, I appreciate the strength that women bring all together globally. Um, we are emotionally strong, we're physically strong. We may not have um, the muscles and the, and, and the broad shoulders <laughs> that men may have, but that doesn't discount the fact that women are also far more loyal to um, completing any mission, whether it's, it's uh, you know, bringing your company forward and, and being an awesome entrepreneur, because I'm all about that, or um, being a great role model and a mentor, or, or becoming a suicide bomber. Either way, it's, it's understanding the female anatomy and what goes on, on into it. Conditioning is a huge aspect of it as well. Because women are more emotional, conditioning um, can be done easily. We function in the gray far better far better. And it's not to say that we can be conditioned to become bombers, but we can be conditioned to do pretty much anything because we put our mind to it. Uh, that goes for men and women across the board and even children at that point. But in understanding females, uh, I, I want to bring forward the fact that um, you know, put yourselves in their shoes and think to yourself, what is the legitimate way of dying? Uh, suicide in every, every religion, every ethnicity is pretty much a sin. Um, so when somebody tells you, uh, because you're so distraught and perhaps even to a certain extent illiterate, um, because even the most educated can be illiterate and ignorant in, in many different ways. What is the next best choice? What, you know, how do you end your misery? How do you end your life knowing that you may be raped over and over or you may be shed from society, especially one where saving face is very important. Um, so understanding that function of that reality, making that person human versus an object goes a long way in understanding why um, somebody will tick to the extent that they will want to die. Yeah. I wow. said a lot. <laughs> I was about to say the same thing. I think we right here, we on the same page. I was like, wow, that was a lot. Yeah. That was a lot of information, but it was appreciated because it was a look into a world that I would have never have conceived of because basically what you did is you took someone that many people would look at as um, evil or, you know, Mm -hmm. how can you do this and you humanize them which is exactly what you were saying so I'm a, I have a lot of questions for you Dr. Patel I'm gonna come back though because my, my wheels are spinning but I have to get over to Brett because I can see Brett's about to leave right now Brett is about to run he's like if one more person talks <laughs> about these women and these emotions and these feelings I'm out of here stay with us Brett I actually, I actually love it. I, I, I love talking about emotion, psychology, uh, understanding the, the conditioning process that Bina was talking about. That's a lot of the work that I, I do as well, because when you really look at how somebody performs at a very high level, whether it's a, an athlete or an entrepreneur or just an, an employee, there's a belief system that we all have in, in terms of how we perform and why we perform that way and so if we can change or reframe that belief system uh, even if it's a, a hostage negotiation system where someone's you know suicide bombing if you can change the way that they look at the situation you could possibly uh, change and, and shift that situation so a lot of my work is actually looking at the psychology behind how people think and why they they actually think that way is that what you do at high stakes yes that's what the high stakes training lab was was created for uh, you know I've 
played in the NFL and was fortunate enough to play with one of the, the top uh, NFL coaches, I think, of all time, Bill Belichick. For I, I know we have a lot of women here, but he's he's kind of the uh, the god of, of football. And then the uh, I, I would say his his son, which is Jesus, is Tom Brady. So if I can yes. make that, that, that analogy to religion, um, they are kind of the, the sacred uh, team for football. And I was able to be there for three years and witness firsthand how, to, how that organization runs from top down. And so <clears throat> that gave me some, uh, a great foundation and insight to be able to go into business. And as I did go into business and realized how uh, much from football translated to actually the day-to-day -day in business, it started to, to lead me down the psych psychology path and studying neuroscience and how the brain works and you know, why we're afraid and how fear stops us in our tracks or why do those actually push through fear and a lot of that reason is really comes down to how much struggle you've had in your past and how much how how willing are you to dive into that next phase of struggle right and i, I like to call it grit right how much grit do you actually have because those who can withstand struggle um, some people may call it temporary pain but those that can withstand struggle at a much higher rate typically tend to take more risk um, and as men we typically do are, are more um, <clears throat> uh, we we are more challenged to take risk, and women um, are more risk averse. And so when Renee was talking, um, my my last five years before I started my consulting company and peak performance company, I've been in the financial uh, services space. I started on the insurance side and jumped into wealth management over the last five years. So I've worked with people who. Um, don't have as, it, it, enough money to really put food on the plate. And I worked with people who have net worths of over $50 million. And you see across the board that women are more concerned with the longevity of their, their family, making sure that their family is protected in the event of something happening to their husband. Um, just a, a, a statistic that I'm sure, Renee, you know, but most people may not know is that uh, men uh, live usually about six, two to six years less than women do. So when you're talking about estate planning, when you're talking about life insurance and making sure that your estate is protected, uh, women usually end up dealing with that, uh, that liability. I definitely agree. One of the statistics that I'm familiar with is that married men tend to live longer than single men. And it's not only that single men, um, you know, do a lot more riskier things, but married um, women nag. Like that's what wives do. That's our full time, 100%. We got, our job is to nag. Have you gone to the doctor? Your, <laughs> your leg fell off, get to the doctor, go. You know what I mean? You got a hole in your heart, you know, and that's what we do, but that's what keeps our husbands around um, longer. So excellent points on everybody's part. I love it. Interesting. I want to go back to Dr. Patel because you just intrigued me. One of the things that, um, in everything that you said, I wanted to be specific about how how has this affected your new norm? Were you someone who went out to a research center or were you used to working at home? No, I have, I'm actually accustomed to traveling um, mm -hmm. most of the time being on the road, living in hotel rooms um, and all that. But I, it's nice to be home. It, it, the first two weeks, it was, it was great because I felt like I was vacationing. Um, but then reality hit and I had to start working remotely. Um, I've actually enjoyed this time and I'm here with my sister. I spend more time with her children. Um, and when I was on the road, I saw my other sister and brother-in-law and spend time, some time with them. I didn't get a whole lot of time, but it gives me an opportunity to group. Um, I grew up in an extended family where um, it's a very traditional way of living um, in the Indian culture. So it was my dad, his two brothers, and all of our families um, under one roof. Uh, uh, and then we brought that uh, custom here into the United States, grew, growing up in Florida, Gainesville, Florida. Go Gators. Um, and so... You know, having that family touch has always been, <laughs> I have to do that, a very important. And, um, but the adjustment was, was not, um, I wouldn't say it was difficult. It's just, you don't have your own time and sometimes your own space, but I'm okay with that um, because my sister's a great cook. My mom's a great cook. They send food all the time. And, um, and it's just having that time and flexibility to, to, to be here at home. The adjustment, again, I do miss going out. I'm, I'm a traveler. I love traveling. Uh, culture and people intrigue me and, and the customs actually intrigue me. So I'm finding that during this time, this COVID-19 time, um, many things are changing in people's customs, right? And, and uh, like funeral rites are changing. 
um, in Islam, for example, um, you know, the imams have to do uh, funerals away from the body to a certain extent. Um, so is it the prayer of the unknown? W what type of a prayer is it that ha they have to execute? So it's nice to see that many cultures are actually shifting and making the adjustments necessary to carry out their customs. Yeah. Yes. Renee, were you at home? I am. At, we actually picked up from our home in outside of Boston and are now at our parents' home in Penn, in Penn State, in uh, State College, Pennsylvania. My and questions are off today. Let me rephrase the question. Prior to COVID-19, were you going out to the office? Were you working at home? What was your, yeah, what so was we, your routine? We actually, um, we all work remotely. So this mm -hmm. is one of the things where we now have actually grown our team and grown quite a bit but we all work remotely and that has worked for us and so uh we just were going to establish uh, a new place in uh, downtown quincy uh to work together but one of the things that we were fortunate i would say is that because we've been doing this for two years all from home we know how to set a schedule stick to the schedule use all you know skype zoom uber you name it with a click of a button we're all there and I think from, you know, we didn't have to learn some of those things where we've actually helped some of our friends and colleagues um, go. I just did a seminar for um, a group uh, that had invested us around, okay, how do you, you know, how do you tackle some of these um, initiatives that you can, that you want to get accomplished, but now everyone's kind of like, oh, should I go watch TV or should I work, right? Those are real life things that happen. Mm -hmm. right where people now have their kids to take care of their dogs they're out going for walks and things like that so long before that we knew how to set the schedules the deadlines and get everything done and then it's one of the things too is how do you keep people working together and mm -hmm. motivate people and knowing how to make sure you bring joy to work as well mm -hmm. and you know you need to laugh you need to have a good time and that's one thing that what we try to do is like we all open we spend the first few minutes of our conversations around Hey, what'd you do today? Okay, tell us many things your kids did, right? Because otherwise, if you don't have those conversations and it's more just like, here's your checklist, do the following seven things. Yes, yes, no, you're good, you're bad. It doesn't work and you can't build a sense of culture and sustain that. And so one of the things I would encourage all of us now that we're working from home is, you know, make sure you do something a little bit fun or let people talk a little bit about what's going on or they did, you know, something entertaining, I would hope, because otherwise it gets really boring very fast. Yes, and we all go stir crazy. Uh, have you found, Renee, that you communicate with your clients in a different way? Now, the reason I ask this, and it may sound weird, but most things in my life are weird. I have a, a lovely lady that I, that I help all the time. She will be 99 this year. And wow. what's, what's weird is that she never had an urge to text. Like, she just like, I don't know how to do that. Call me. But now, because she's quarantined and a lot of people are reaching out to her, she's learned how to text, you know, for a 99-year-old lady who learns how to text just to communicate with her great-grandkids who are in Georgia, it's a new form of communication for, for her. Have you felt that because more people are looking into state planning, that you're using different types of communication now? Yeah, so this is where we're launching our series of videos um, mm -hmm. on our website over the some will probably go live today tomorrow but we had our state planning attorney just do a series of about 20 different videos mm -hmm. because one um uh, we found that people like to watch things more than they like to read yeah. right mm -hmm. it just seems to be human nature right now so we have a bunch of these 20 different videos and then um we have some superstars in there too my eight-year-old son liam who at least thinks he's a superstar <laughs> is joining no, Yes, because uh, he, he tells you, he's the number one gentry of salesperson, he will tell you. But <laughs> what we're going to do is launch these videos because one, it's more fun, right? And and so instead of saying this is a morbid topic, you know, trying to get people to say, okay, this is real, this is reality, let's do this together. It's now affordable. We're not going to make this scary. You don't have to like worry about X, Y, and Z, you can come back and change things. But I think those videos, um also let people get to know us as well because now in a world we're all living in a place where should i click this button should i do this i'm living with this you know the computer seem even further away so who are the real people behind these things are they qualified how do you get that experience you know that really kind of like one-to-one -one experience and that's where we think all the new videos and things that we're releasing 
really will help people and um, sometimes comfort them. Like we have some really sad notes that come through. And one thing I can tell you is that um, I think sometimes when people are sending notes through like your website or Facebook, they don't know that there's real people on the other end. I think they must think there's a computer maybe that generates the responses back to you. But there's real people, right? They're seeing that like info ad or this thing where people are looking at that. And so sometimes like we all will grab our chest and like, oh, that poor family, right? Or something. And, and they're asking, what can I do? And we can't ever give out legal advice, but we can help them with what are forms they can fill out or here's some places to go and learn. But you really hear these, like some are very heartwarming, wonderful stories where like, I am going to take care of my grandma, you know, like I'm going to make her get this stuff done because, yeah. And then you have other ones where families are at war and people are coming out of the woodwork because people have money. But what we found is that you're really trying to reach people and we think video, we're going to try that. And then the webinars that I told you we introduced, we're trying to find more ways to make sure we connect um, so people get to see that there are real people there. Excellent, excellent. Brett, question for you. One of the things that I've been discussing, I don't know if you have any thoughts or information on that people keep asking about is the SBA loans, SBA loans, SBA loans. It, uh, have you worked with that? Had any experience with that? Yeah, so it's funny you ask that question. So most of my work has transitioned from figuring out how to grow companies to figuring out how to sustain and save companies. So mm -hmm. uh, the PPP program or the Paycheck Protection Program has been a huge uh kind of undertaking for me and a lot of my clients, a lot of people, the, the really there's two things that everybody was trying to figure out uh, when it first was launched is one, how do I sign up? And then two, how do I calculate uh, the monthly uh, uh, paycheck that I would receive or the, the, the loan amount that I would receive? And so um, I don't know if you know this, but Bank of America and a lot of these larger banks um, don't ha necessarily have, Bank of America is one of the ones who have set up the, the actual application online. Mm -hmm. Most of the larger banks haven't set up that application online. Mm -hmm. However, a lot of the smaller banks, the community, we call them community banks, have set up those, those uh, applications and are actually filing those applications. So there's a lot of people, some of my clients in which you haven't been able to file an application yet because it hasn't been set up online and there's no mm -hmm. other way to do that. Um, the caveat with that and the, the difficulty with that is there's only $350 billion that the government has allocated for this. So there can be a potential where you may not receive um, a, a, a loan check or a, uh, a paycheck, right? And so that's the scary part for a lot of people. So um, yes, to answer your question, a lot of my, my uh, consulting has now been shifted into figuring out how to file that as quickly as possible. And then now refocusing our attention on what needs to be done within the company, looking at expenses and figuring out how to minimize our, our, or mitigate our overhead, um, looking at other strategies in terms of bringing everything online. Obviously, Zoom has taken off. I don't think people realize how 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 uh, effective Zoom could be, but um, now- Yeah, not to, inter to interrupt you, but I, I read an article that Zoom is up 535%. It is, it is. And uh, I, I, I wish I had bought the stock. I, I, I've so been do looking I. at it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been buying a lot of other stock now that everything's been down, but Zoom is um, is definitely the wave of the future. Um, but figuring out like what Renee was saying is how do you create the group environment online um, where you're dealing with, you know, five to 10 plus employees and how do you check in with everybody? How do you make sure everybody is still has the right mindset to um, uh, be motivated and to complete their tasks? So um, it's been an interesting time, um, but nonetheless, I'm a very optimistic person. So um, hopefully we'll uh, we'll pull through this just like the you know we have in the past. Yes, we definitely will. That that's what we are. We're definitely resilient. Um, still on you, Brett. Let me just ask you this: There has been a lot of what I've seen comments about the SBA loans, the Paycheck Protection Pro Program is one is just one aspect of them. But there are some people who feel that. The, these are, you know, these are loans and these businesses, these companies are to a certain extent now in dire straits. So to come in and then loan these people money at whatever these interest rates, some businesses don't even want to do that. I mean, it's not like we're expecting free money because nobody's going to get free money. But to what are your thoughts on these being a loan? for these companies? Well, the the, the reason why it's a, it's a loan is because um, in don't take my word for it because I'm not a tax expert, but I believe it's because uh, if it was a gift uh, or if it was an actual just a, a, a paycheck, we would have to pay taxes on that on that money. 
right? Mm -hmm. And so that's going to increase the taxable income of the business. However, if it's a loan, um, you can now repay that and then you can also write the interest off as a business. So um, they did pretty much loan us the money at one of the lowest rates I've ever seen, which is a half a percent. Mm -hmm. And so even though it is at a, at, a, at a half a percent, we will have to eventually pay that back. But it's, it's a very incremental amount and you can obviously work with the government to pay that back over time. Uh, so that is, I, I would say, the main reason why it's a loan as opposed to a, a stipend. For instance, like these, uh, the $1,200 stimulus check right. that's being given out to uh, uh, taxpayers who filed in either 2018 or 2019. Essentially, what that is, is it's an advance on your, on your, uh, uh, your, your, your paycheck coming back from taxes, right? Mm -hmm. And so if, that, <clears throat> if you didn't have a, uh, a, a tax return, uh, then what that would happen? What would happen is you would have to file that in 2020 and pay taxes on that $1,200 stimulus check. So mm -hmm. you have to look at it both ways. No, no one gives free money unless it's a family member um, mm -hmm. or a friend, and that's a, technically a gift. And even though uh, we can give out $15,000 of, of, of gifts a year, after that we will have to pay taxes on on any of those gifts. So there's there's regulations with the IRS and there's regulations that the government. Um, has to kind of figure out how to take, how to not necessarily make people accountable, but make sure that we can do this in a, in a uh, efficient way that helps everybody. Thank you. Anna, have your clients asked you about the SBA loans? Uh, no, they haven't. Uh, most of them are right now focusing on retargeting. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I mean, it's a hard situation for the entire sector, and I foresee some of them uh, turning around, uh, I think, in a couple of weeks when we know actually the stance, how stance it is this quarantine going to be. Uh, they are talking about opening in some states. They are talking about uh, extending the quarantine in other states. So we need to know how extensive this quarantine is going to be uh, before they take that decision, mainly because of the scope of events. Events require a lot of money and also they have a shorter runway. So they depend on the forecast that tells them in how many weeks they can be working normally again. Yeah. You mentioned retargeting. When you are speaking with your clients, have you seen any, are there any um, strategies, specific strategies that a business can implement to show that they're being of service, that they're here to help? Are there specific steps or do you just say to your clients, go out and be of service? No, 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 uh, of course not. Uh, first of all is to see what you have. So, for example, most of them were in the events uh, industry. Mm -hmm. So what they have is that they had book speakers, they had paid tickets, they had venues. Uh, some of them could negotiate with the venues to forego this year's event and change it to the next year's event, mm -hmm. a sort of a pre-booking, if you can call it like that. And then they held the event, but they did it virtually. So they actually did a couple of expos that way in which they still had the speakers coming in via Zoom, via other ways, and they still held the promise to the ticket holders by also allowing them access to that exclusive video content, which mm -hmm. is after all what they came to see. They mm -hmm. came to see the speakers, they came to get inspired, they came to get uh, uh, some connections with them. So they wanted that. So they did as much as they could. So step number one, take what you have and retarget it uh, and repackage it and make it a new product. Step, up, step number two, see how far you can go with your product. Some of them decided, uh, we had a film festival that actually started an online film festival. So they decided to create a new product and say, you know what, uh, Netflix is a bit, uh, everybody burns out <laughs> at the end of the day. We all seen all the series, we all seen all the movies. So let's focus on films that are not that scene on screens. So they did that and they are performing quite well with their own, uh, within their own industry. So I think this is key as well to see what other avenues of revenue you can get. Um, it may be unexpected. For us, it was crisis response. For others, can be retargeting their product to another industry. 
I like that. I like specific steps. We can pass those on to whoever's watching live. Take these steps because in during this trying time, there's so many people who still have businesses to operate, entrepreneurs who still have to grow. We still have to do what we can to survive. Dr. Patel, I wanted to ask you, we spoke a little bit about conflict resolution and your organizational abilities. One of the things that I've seen during this during this time, and is is weird. I like saying that. I don't know. That's my vibe for today's show. It's not normal, but I see like relationships. For It's like in one week, I had a friend who was like, I'm getting a divorce. And then I had other people, they broke up. And I went to them, especially my friend who, who said she was getting a divorce. And I was like, look, now is not the time. Okay, we're in apocalypse. The world is, you know, all over the place. This is not a good time to get a divorce. I'm like, what if we have to live in the woods and you need somebody to cut the firewood or, you know, do all of these things? You, this is not a good time. And so it, I don't know if it was the moon or what, but it was like one week. And then all of a sudden I talked them out of it. People got back together. But I know there's a lot of conflict going on during these times. Yes, yes, I'll tell you, this is, um, I, I tell folks, this is like the Charles Dickens, the Taylor Two Cities, it's the best of times, it's the worst of times, yes. right? Um, it's actually a time, yes, we're forced to spend time with each other. And uh, we're supposed to, you know, we're so accustomed to um, going to work and rushing and, and, and keeping um, uh, more uh, in communication with our coworkers and our bosses and stuff versus actually coming home and spending the time that we should with our family. So this, this, this these strange times, I guess we can say it, have has forced us to actually pick up the phone and call our siblings, um, play online Pictionary with our loved ones, but also physically spend the time with our spouses and our partners. And it's an adjustment. And it, it shows us that technology has really taken us away from our family lives. And the, while the conflict is normal and it's healthy, um, because you have no choice but to live with that person because where else are you going to go? You're not going right. to find a new place to go right now. Or is it, you know, should you go to a friend's house? It's, do they want you there? Who knows if you were bringing the COVID symptoms, right? Um, but it's it's actually a good time to reprioritize and to spend that time that you would spend otherwise with yourself, um, with your family. So let's say the time you would spend if you had a, a one hour commute. Um, now spend that time with your family and have breakfast with them because everybody's at home and make that a new norm and a daily routine until the norm shifts again. So that way you're, you're not just spending time with them, but you yourself as an individual, you're getting accustomed to spending this time and then wanting more and more to spend it. So create new habits, um, create uh, ways to engage, but also find out you know, something new about each person that you must have forgotten because it's new now or that they've grown and you've grown. So it start, it's, it's a great time to start talking to people. Um, I think I, I FaceTime my parents more than ever. Um, usually it's once a week, if that, or just a phone call. Um, but lately, because they, they're also afraid to come out of their house, um, we FaceTime and it's fun Be, or, or just like on Saturday, we played um, online Pictionary. I didn't even know you could play that online, but uh, with my siblings, <laughs> we, we did a small little nightcap, uh, like kind of like a happy hour, and we played it. It was so much fun. So there are ways to engage um, people you, you know, because with siblings, you even if you're an adult, it doesn't matter. You still argue. It's just, mm -hmm. it's just the good old ways of getting along, right? Um, but it was a fun way to just get together and talk to people. Um, I'll tell you, I talk on the phone a lot more than I ever thought I ever would. I hear from my old colleagues. I hear from my friends who I haven't talked to in probably months. So it's, it's been nice. Am I tired of being on the phone? Actually not. It's becoming a new norm for me. So um, it's, it's just readjusting. And for couples, hey, this is, this is just a little thing. It'll pass and you'll get used to each other once again. So, you know, it's okay to fight out your differences as long as you don't punch each other. Yeah. Yes, because then we're going to call Dr. Patel for um, conflict <laughs> resolution <laughs> skills. <laughs> That's right. I'll be doing live um, IG, uh, IG live, actually, for just uh, mindful moments, I call them, and why mm -hmm. it's important to sort of have these fun moments. And, and it's okay. It's okay. Conflict is okay. And that's what it's going to be about. I think conflict is okay. I think it's how you respond to it, how you handle it, how you deal with it, as opposed to just blowing up. That's what I work on. I, I'm one of those people that just blows up. And I do it sometimes for sheer inter entertainment. It's just entertainment at that point. But <clears throat> I digress. Um, 
Dr. Patel, one of the things that you said is you keep saying, I keep hearing, this is like the common thing. Everybody's like the new norm, the new norm, the new norm, because that world that we used to live in is is definitely gone. I, you know, no matter what, I believe that we're never going to go back to exactly the way we were. But to ask all of my other guests, have anyone else seen a change in how they relate to their family, different things that they're doing during this time? Um, yeah, uh, basically, uh, I felt, I think, for the first time in my life, uh, I've been doing volunteering work for years, decades. Mm -hmm. And for the first time, I had caregiver syndrome. Uh, yeah. Suddenly, I was like leading all these projects. But when I came, like, I came back to my private time, like to my bedroom, and the home office was closed, and everything was said and done, and I would feel so tired. And I would feel I'm not making any progress with these projects. And I could feel the despair of all the stories I would hear throughout the day, when before that wasn't it. And what I found out is that uh, before uh, I could leave the business at the office, but now mm -hmm. the business was in my living room. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn how to limit myself. Like, okay, if we cannot divide this in spaces, we, we can divide it mentally with time. Mm -hmm. So from this hour to this hour, I will focus on what I can give, what I can do. But after that, I will give myself a break uh, because I was feeling the burnout already when before it wasn't like that. Excellent advice. And before this, even before the COVID-19 years before, when I speak to different clients, that is one of the main um, pieces of advice that I give new clients who are just starting out as entrepreneurs always set your business hours set your business hours because what happens if you don't is it just kind of tends to blend into your work in 24 hours mm -hmm. and i do that specifically when i have business hours and i receive an email i may respond to it i may not but i reserve the right to respond to it when my business is open again so you have to have a mental cutoff time so that you can go do other things you can say you know what i'm off that's time to play with the kids go out with the hubby go see friends because I'm not at work. Just because I'm at home doesn't mean I have to be at work 24 seven. Now, Renee, I know we, we gave a shout out to mom. Hey mom, we love you. I don't know you, but I think you're great just because um, Renee's here. But have you seen difference? I mean, so, you know, cause people always make jokes about moms and mother-in-laws and, and living like that. Has your communication changed? Yes, I would say definitely yes, because one is um, now my mom's actually playing a few roles, right? She's acting as my son's teacher, right? And that's mm -hmm. what she did for a living. So she's got that. And now I have to kind of make sure, are you meeting these deadlines? <laughs> is he getting his homework done? I'm like, I'm managing my mother. And <laughs> she, she's going to shoot me when she sees that. But then other things are good too. Like we had to let a lot of vendors go. And we mm -hmm. had to like tell a lot of folks like, Hey, either you come down in price because of this new reality we're living in, or you're just not here. And it was so sad because some people I'm like, wake up, for God's sakes, wake up. I'm a nice person, but I can't, I can't keep up with the pricing, right? Like this is where like everybody's got these pressures. And then my mom gave me a big hug because I felt so bad about letting all these people go. And I'm like, oh my God, okay, that was really nice. Cause like, <laughs> you know, you're feeling really bad because you like love these people. They've helped you get to where you're going to. But it's like, guys, either you live in this new reality with us or we can't bring you in. And then my mom gave me a big hug and she's like, look, you know, you have a whole bunch of people. You've built this team, you've got this company. And think about all the thousands of people that you're helping. And while, you know, they are probably making decisions for their families too. I'm like, oh my God, you're so wise, mom. You're so mm -hmm. wise. And so, uh, it, yeah, anyway, so I'm a big fan of my mother, obviously, and my dad has Alzheimer's. And so it's really kind of a hard time for her because um, he probably needs to go to a nursing home soon. Mm -hmm. So at the same time, like we're living all the stories we tell people about. Mm -hmm. And it's also nice where my mom can pop in and be like, okay, please write this blog. People need to know this. People need to know this. So she's helping us um, just as much, but we couldn't do all that we're doing if we weren't, if she weren't here to help. Well, that's beautiful. I can see the emotion in it when, when you're telling it, the love, it comes through in your eyes, it comes through in your smile and in your face. We're going to have to give mom her own um, webinar series, her own video series. She's oh going to be the new. She... Oh no, she probably, she's pretty funny too. But, um, and then, and this is where like my poor husband, we actually had to leave my husband in Boston because he's working this month and he's furloughed next month. 
Oh. And this has been the hardest time because we all miss each other. So it's thank God for Skype. Thank goodness for this. And it's and it's a hard time because like our business, people are doing wills and protecting themselves more than ever. But for him, he's uh, he does baby uh, things like uh, strollers and car seats and things like that. So they're slowing down and we keep promising. We're like, okay, in 10 months when this is all over, your business is going crazy, guys. So yes. Yes. But it's, just, it's really sad. <laughs> it's this really sad time where like, you know, he'll come down next month, but because there's so many unknowns, right? Mm -hmm. but this is where that hug from mom, that's the Aww. one thing where that just feels good. I love that. I wish I could just take that little smile on the commercials, like the <laughs> hug from mom feels good. Brett, how's life for you? Are you going to stir crazy in the house? You get rid of people, bring people in. I know there's some changes going on in your life. We still on mute, Brett. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I said there there has been. I, my my girlfriend was actually uh, on a conference call in the other other room, so she's actually uh, been with me for most of this time. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's been an adjustment because um, you know we, we're we're almost like a we work in here. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it, it you know over the first week it was it was kind of tough. You know, not I'm a, I'm a big you know I got to have my workout. I got to go to the gym and. Um, once the gyms closed, it was kind of like, okay, now what? And so mm -hmm. um, I, I, I tried to be more proactive and, instead of reactive and, and kind of made it my, my off, turned my office into a home gym. So mm -hmm. um, have some weights and yoga mat and all that good stuff here. So been able to, <clears throat> excuse me, to keep that up and um, just really trying to find routines. Um, this, this month is particularly a little bit different because uh, Sunday we celebrated my younger brother's birthday. And oh, um, happy belated birthday. Yes, thank you. And we that was the first time we ever did a birthday over Zoom. Uh mm -hmm. just because uh we couldn't bring everybody together. We were initially were going to do a you know a dinner at my mother's house like we normally do. And then I thought about it and I said, Hey, is this really the safest thing to do right now? So practice the social distancing and then hopefully um this thing is over by the 22nd because it's my mother's birthday so Aww. um <laughs> so i'm just trying trying to make these small adjustments and, and shifts but really trying to maintain my, my day, daily and, and, and routinely schedule um i know bina was talking about it it's it's so important to to make sure that we we maintain those schedules i know you talked about setting work hours it, it's it, and not letting those work hours go into personal time and, and sleep time and so for me it's really just trying to maintain that waking up at the same time going to bed at the same time and keeping a lot of those habits in place i can completely relate my birthday was the 31st of march oh, and related. thank you as an aries i'm a people person i'm fire i'm always going you know and i almost every year i have some kind of party and it's interesting because I don't always throw these parties. People just kind of show up, you know. So this year, nobody's showing up, you know. I uh, had a friend who came in um, from Georgia for the quarantine. I didn't even get a chance to see her, you know, because um, she's here, but we can't go out. So it's like I tell people, this was one of the most reflective I won't use the word lonely, depressing, you know, any of those, but it was reflective. You know what I mean? I just sat and thought about, you know, I'm, I'm grateful to be alive. I had to do a, a gratitude checklist of just, I'm here, everybody's safe, everybody's healthy. And at the end of the day, those are the most important things. But I will be 45 next year and I am throwing a party of the century, <laughs> just, just so you know. <laughs> I love it. I love it, whether it's Zoom or, or elsewhere. Uh, it's not going to be on Zoom next year. This this year, you know what I mean. I was lonely, so I, I'm I'm th I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna top myself from some of the parties I've thrown next year when I hit that 45. I think we'll all be celebrating life next year, all of us. Yeah. Yes. 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 I believe it. And like uh, I, I don't know who said it, I, but we were talking about uh, Renee. 10 months from now, we're going to be celebrating a lot of lives, a lot of births, you know, I yes. saw some memes on social media that said, okay, look, I'm not going to 52 different baby showers in December <laughs> just because you were bored, okay? We're going to need y'all to do whatever it is that y'all do to keep this baby boom down. This is going to be a new generation of baby boomers, I can tell you that. Now, we are coming down to the last five minutes of the show, and what I like to do at the end of every show is to allow my guests uh, a moment to speak to our audience, to the people who are watching live, to the people who are watching this in the archives, and just give them a few final words. So we're going to start with you there, Renee. Okay, protect yourself, protect your family, 
estate planning may not be fun, but you definitely need it. So take advantage of the fact that you can now do it online from your home and it's really affordable. So you have no more excuses for not protecting you and your families. That's Chintrio. I like that. I was going to go to the next person, but you keep saying affordable, affordable, affordable. affordable. 29 bucks. It's 29, $29.99 for essential employees. Like my parents paid 10,000 bucks to lawyers and it's like, who can do that? Or other people like the lawyer who joined our team used to choose a charge like 2,500 bucks. Okay. What normal people today can afford that, right? With the furloughs, with all these things going on. So we do a state specific online plan, plan uh, the online estate planning. And right now it's 29.99 for essential employees. So and typically it's 129 because people need to protect themselves, but it has to be affordable and we've made it easy to do. So, so Renee, I, I, sorry to catch you off. I just want to clarify. So it's a full estate plan, including a trust as well. Yeah, so the, the trust come next month. So the trusts are coming now. So right now for the 299, it's the power of attorney, the healthcare proxies, the wills, um, pet powers of attorneys, other documents are also in there. And then the digital vault so you can save and share everything. And then the trust is coming next month. But what we found, we did a lot of testing is that the average folks, it sounds good to them, but how they use it and how they need to set it up the right way. Too many people you know, are making mistakes with things today. So we've been so careful about that because you know these products have to be easy to use and easy to understand so we don't mess up and that you don't make more mistakes. And that's why we do just estate planning. But it's a great question. But right now, just get, just get those things in place, the healthcare proxy, and the will and you know right there that's that's good advice for everybody that's advice right. for everybody anna uh serve your community serve your family and you can do it straight from home you can check out getsellers.com and learn how you can open your own online volunteering community so stay safe but still serve go that website for us please anna getsellers.com Zealous, Z E L O S? Yep. Okay, so G E T Z E L O S dot com. Visit yep. your website. All of the links are going to be in the post. Please check them out. Please support our, our guest. Dr. Patel, what do you have for us? Well, again, uh, I have to tell you, conflict is, as much as people don't like to fight, they may love to fight. I don't know, everybody deals with conflict differently, but it's important to address what you are arguing about and sort of get to the bottom of it. It's hard to do that, so I'm here for you. Um, my biggest advice during this, these crazy times are to keep your structure, keep your routine. Okay, so it looks like we may be having a few technical difficulties. I, I don't know if it's, it's just me. Mental... It might be me. I'm back, I think. Yes, you're back. It's just a little low. So I, I think the last part that Do we you heard. See me? Yes, we have you right here. So I think we had you for most of the show. Um, yeah, what, what my. my... Keep your routine. That's all I have to say. Keep your routine. It creates mental structure, which helps you. I think what we're getting from Dr. Patel, Dr. Bina Patel, is just keep your routine. Wonderful final words. Brett, you want to take us out? Yes. We're, we're all an ecosystem. We're all here to uh, support each other. And I think this is a more important time than ever before to really look at your neighbor, look at your family and check in and make sure everybody is doing okay. Um, there's ways to help, whether it's it's financially, uh, maybe it's sending, you know, some friends or coworkers, a, you know, a, a $5 gift card to, you know, a restaurant that's still open and supporting that restaurant um, in your neighborhood. Um, and personally focus on what you can control. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, noise right now and when there is noise you have to quiet the mind and a lot of people struggle with that aspect because it is very difficult to focus and the main things we or the main thing you don't realize about focus is focus is eliminating distractions so mm -hmm. keep your routine like dr patel said make sure you focus on what's important uh, be mindful of those around you be mindful of yourself and find an activity a, 
a, a hobby, something to um, advance where you're trying to go. This isn't a time to take your foot off the brake. This is a time to uh, laser focus on the things that you want to do uh, in your life because um, we don't, we're not here just to work our entire lives. We're here to be able to give, we're here to, to, to contribute, and we're here to leave an impact in this world. Wonderful. I think those are definitely all wonderful words of wisdom, advice, love that's being presented to our guests. I ask that you support the show and not only support the show, but support our guests. Our guests have given up their time, their energy, their resources. They've been vulnerable in sharing their stories. Their website links are again in the post. Check them out. Follow them on social media. If you'd like to be a guest, please visit the website at ashsharifa.com. Click on be a guest. And you'll also see a way where you can support the show. Until next time, I'll be back for Friday's episode of The Roundtable. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye now. Thank you.